This is a problem-solving screencast on structural elucidation in organic chemistry. So in this problem, we're given four um, pieces of information. We have an IR spectrum, a mass spectrum, carbon-13 NMR spectrum, and proton NMR spectrum. So as always, we're going to start with the molecular formula which we are given in the mass spectrum data here. So we have C4H6NBr. So we have a couple heteroatoms in this molecular formula. So in, in terms of figuring out the degrees of unsaturation, we have to take those into consideration to the molecular formula that we, we use in that calculation. So nitrogen actually subtracts from the hydrogen count and halogens add to the hydrogen count. So minus one plus one. Overall is zero, so this actually just becomes C4 H6. So that's what we're going to use um, in our equation. The fully saturated molecular formula is going to be CnH2n plus 2. So C4 n is equal to 4. H is 2n8 plus 2, so that's going to be 10. So essentially we have H10 minus H6 is going to give us H4 we then divide that by 2 and that gets us 2 degrees of unsaturation so in this molecular formula C4H6NBr there are 2 degrees of unsaturation so at this point, with the information we're given, we're, we're done analyzing the mass spectrum. We're now going to go to the IR spectrum to determine if there's major functional groups in region 1, 2, or 3 that can help us determine uh, where these two degrees of unsaturation belong to. So if you recall, in, in the IR spectrum, in this region here, region 1, is typically just CH stretching. So they point out in, in this region 2 here at 2249, we have a sharp peak. So in region 2, which is about you know, 2000 to 2400, that's C. C triple bonds or CN triple bonds. So either a terminal alkyne or a nitrile, basically. So we have nothing in region 3, which is the carbonyl region. So our molecular formula doesn't have oxygen either. So that's an indication that we have no functional groups with a carbonyl. The fact that we do have a nitrogen and we do see this peak here at 2249 is a, a strong indication that the molecular formula is going to have a nitrile and if we count the number of pi bonds in there that's that's two pi bonds so two degrees of unsaturation so let, let's start doing some detective work here we're, we're starting off with C4 H six N B R. That's two degrees of unsaturation. We've seen from the I R that there's most likely a nitrile in there. So let's subtract out the C N and, and see what we're left with in terms of the molecular formula. So we're left with C three. H6Br. So we've accounted for all the degrees of unsaturation. So this has zero degrees of unsaturation uh, in, in the remaining fragment here. 
Now we can go to the carbon-13 and proton NMR data and start putting the pieces together. So again, in, in the carbon-13 NMR here, let's look at this proton decoupled. And what, that, what that's telling us is the number of unique carbons. So let's start uh, down uh, upfield here at, at zero. We see one, two, three, and then we see solvent around 80. We're going to ignore that. And then four. So we have four unique carbons, and the molecular formula has four carbons. So again, this molecule has, has no symmetry, which would reduce the number of unique carbons. So another piece of information in the C13 spectrum is this DEPT experiment. This is just another carbon NMR that actually tells us the number of attached protons to the carbon. And in, in this spectrum, a CH2 group, the, the, the signal is going to be below or down. CH3 and CH will both be up. So if we're, we're going along, say we're reading the analyzing the data that way. We come along, we see that carbons 1, 2, and 3 are all down. So these all three are, are CH2 groups. So they, they each look like that. They each have a point of attachment, which we have to figure out. We keep going along, we see that peak 4 here, it, it doesn't have any corresponding peak in this depth spectrum. What that tells us is there's no hydrogens attached to that carbon. So we can assign that carbon to the nitrile. So this peak has no hydrogens. It's going to be the, the carbon of the nitrile. So with this data, let's, let's kind of uh, keep track of the fragments that we have to put together. We have CH3, or CH2, excuse me. We have a CH2. We have a CH2. And then we have our nitrile. So notice there's some, some resolution between these three carbons here as well. So that's telling us that, you know, these two occur more downfield from this one. So these two, in, in terms of a clue, are, are bonded to heteroatoms because they're at a different chemical shift. So for example, we still have to uh, account for the bromine in the molecular formula. But let's go in and look at the proton NMR spectrum before we start uh, connecting these fragments together. So here's an expansion of what we see from 2 to about 3.5 here in the proton NMR. So first things first, Let's recall that this line here is the integration. And if you look, we have three unique sets of hydrogens. Three unique sets. So we have, if we look at the, the expansion here, we have a set here, a set there, and a set there. So three unique sets. And now let's look at the integration. So if we kind of draw the maximum height, then this baseline, you see they're all the same height. So the molecular formula is telling us there's six hydrogens total. We have three unique sets. So three, and the, they're all the same height. So that means each of those is is two hydrogens. So this is two, this is two, and this is two. 
And that corroborates what we've seen from the depth NMR spectrum in the C13. We have CH2, CH2, CH2. So, so far things make sense. Now, in terms of how things are bonded to one another, well, we can tell in terms of a second approximation that this, this nitrile has to be bonded to one of these CH2 groups because it only has one point of attachment. So we can kind of revise our, our fragments here, CH2, C, N. So we've taken care of, say, those, those two we've bonded. Well, the remaining carbons all have to be bonded to one another because it's two, two, and two. And we're going to essentially put the bromine at the terminus of the chain. So that's how we'll get uh, these three unique sets, each bearing two hydrogens. So let's go ahead and, and do that, and we'll explain why these peaks look the way they do and why the chemical shifts are different. So we're going to bond the rest of these together. Say here we're bonding the bromine. So bromine, CH2, CH2. So we've bonded that, then that, then this, then this. So here's kind of two fragments that we're going to then uh, piece together. So we need that fourth CH2. So bromine, CH2, CH2. So here's the, the third CH2 and then our nitrile. So this gives us three unique sets of hydrogens, each bearing, uh, or three unique carbons, each bearing two hydrogens. Now, how can we in interpret this data? So remember that we, we use the n plus one rule to figure out why these peaks look the way they do. So this has three uh, peaks to it. This has three and this actually has five. So if we use the n plus one rule, that's telling us that the carbon bearing this CH2 group has f uh, four hydrogens next door. So this peak has to belong here because if we look at the neighbors, we have two hydrogens there and two hydrogens there. So if we do the N plus one, we can assign this peak to those hydrogens. So that's called a pentet. P-E-N-T-E-T, -E -E so that's a pentet. Now if we look at the other two, we have uh, triplet looking peaks. So remember from our, our functional group uh, location on the NMR that allylic groups typically occur between, say, two to three. So we can consider this to be an allylic group. It's next to unsaturation. So that occurs as a triplet. So there's no neighbors, no neighboring hydrogens here. We have two there, so we do N plus one, we get three, and that's called a triplet. And then the final CH2 group here is going to be assigned to this group. And the reason it occurs around three and a half, it's bonded to an electronegative element. So remember our electronegativity, delta minus, and the carbon's delta plus. So this is going to be a triplet as well. The bromine obviously bears no hydrogens. The carbon next door has two hydrogens, so we do n plus one to get the triplet. 
So overall, we've, we've shown in this tutorial or problem solving screencast that given all this data, we can piece it together and propose a structure that's internally consistent with all the data.